Hi, welcome to AI Art and Animation, and today we're going to create some animated videos using ControlNet and Deforum Stable Diffusion. So I am using Run Diffusion, which are basically hosted stable diffusion servers in the cloud. And these servers come preloaded with automatic 1111, uh, Invoke AI, software is pre-installed and they also give you access to tons of stable diffusion checkpoints and pre-trained models. So when you don't have a super strong computer um, and also the installation process for stable diffusion can be a bit, you know, a bit tricky. This is a great service. Um, you rent these servers by the hour. They cost anywhere from like 50 cents to $2 and 50 cents depending on the server. They also generate your uh, images and videos a lot faster. Um, so I really like it. So let's get started. So first off, we are going to use ControlNet. And ControlNet is a tool that lets you reproduce the arrangement of objects or human positions from a picture or a video. Uh, so this is an example of a control net video that I did. I took a stock video and basically applied these random prompts uh, and models to it to make it look really weird. Here's another example. You see here, this was the original stock video. And then this is like the video after control net. So going back to run diffusion. So once you load up your run diffusion server um, you want to click on the forum right here and the first thing you want to do is decide what stable diffusion checkpoint you want to use because this will really dictate what your video what your animation style looks like um, there's a lot of checkpoints to choose from and um, I recommend just playing around with all of them. They're all, you know, really fun and different. Today I want to try this one called Ink Punk Diffusion. And I recently discovered this on, um, where did I find this? On StableDiffusionArt.com. So this is like kind of what this style looks like. And I thought this could be interesting to apply to a very normal video of a woman dancing. And the video that I got um, is just of a woman dancing um, on, on pixels. So I can show you guys. This is a little bit different than what the actual video looks like, but this is very similar. So the stock video is basically just this woman dancing around her um, living room. So we're gonna start there. So. After you've clicked on the forum and you've selected your checkpoint here, uh, the next step is you're going to start on the run tab. And the sampler that I, you know, most often use is this one DPM plus plus two M S D E Karas. Um, in terms of width and height, you want to make sure that your width and height match the width and height of the video. Yeah, the stock video that you're using. It doesn't have to match exactly. Like for example, the, the stock video I'm using, I think is 540 by 960 and it still works. But if it's way off, I found that it, it doesn't work. So like if you try to upload something five, you know, uh, 1024 by 1024 and it's set on 512 by 960, in my experience, it didn't work. So step you can leave here at 24. So seed, this is an important one. Um, it defaults to a seed of negative one. And the seed is basically a starting point for a specific outcome. That's how they define it. Um, so fixing the seed lets you start with the, if you basically leave it at a negative one, you're gonna always get a different random starting point. If you apply a, an arbitrary number, to the seed, it allows you to um, start with the same image every time so you can keep building on the same uh, video. So uh, this is actually an experiment. I often just leave it at the negative one and it will constantly, uh, you'll find that the, the changes in the animation are really frequent. 
and it can be real it can be fun but also can be kind of jarring and lead to unexpected results so i've put here the random seed of 2023 2023 2023 okay so next we're done with this section so click over to keyframes so i'm selecting 3d because we're dealing with the you know video um i select wrap for border mode um and basically what this does is this controls the handling method of the pixels that are generated if the image is smaller than the frame so wrap pulls pixels from the opposite edge of the image while replicate replicate repeats the edge of the pixels and extends them. Um, I know it's it's a bit confusing to understand, but all I know is like uh, I like the results of wrap better for replicate in this context. Um, so cadence, this will default. I believe it defaults to either zero or one, um, and it's the number of in between frames that will not be be directly diffused. So if we bring this down to actually one is the lowest it can go it's basically going to diffuse every single frame so if you want it to have it diffuse like every other frame or every four frames you could modify that setting so the max frames is basically the length of this animation where i'm going to keep it at 20 because when you're doing a video it's actually it's, a, it's different than if you're creating a, a video from scratch versus using a stock video. So like um, the video that I'm going to use is about 10 seconds. So I'm going to apply maximum frames of 20 seconds to 20 frames to get about a 20 second video. So the strength schedule, this is the amount of presence of previous frame to influence the next frame. Um, it defaults at 0.65. I'm going to leave it there. If you play around with this, you'll get, you know, very different results. So this is an interesting setting to play around with. And we can skip all of these other settings um, for what we're doing right now. So you don't need to do anything with motion, noise, coherence, or anti-blur. You know, you can if you want to, but you, you don't need to modify any there, anything there to make your stable diffusion work. And you don't need to do anything with these other uh, C, F, G, C, sub C, step, you don't need to do anything there. So next we'll go over to prompts. So this is a very important part of what we're doing. Um, I mean, it's a, it's an important part of creating anything um, in Stable Diffusion. So what I've done is, since we are looking at um, using, let's see, this fantasy um, model, we're going to use their prompt. So they have a positive prompt and a uh, negative prompt that we need to use to kind of get this effect. And this again is unstable dash diffusion dash art. It's just a, I don't think they're actually associated with stable diffusion. So we copy the positive prompt and we bring it back over here to run diffusion and paste a prompt in there. And then I'm going to go get the negative prompt and we'll just put that in here. Okay, so after doing that, um, move along to the INIT tab and you're going to select video INIT. So this is a very important section. This is where you upload the path to the stock video that you're going to use. So like I said, I went to Pexels and I found a video here. Uh, this is actually the video that I'm using. And I made sure to look at videos that have the right orientation. So like vertical orientation. And then if you click into a video, you can actually select the size that you want. So uh, I selected 540 by 960, which is almost a perfect size. So once you do that, if you're using Run Diffusion, what you need to do is you need to upload your video to their server. They explain how to do that on their, if you just click on documentation on their website, and then they have a, a whole article uh, uploading videos for use into forum, and it explains 
what you need to do to get your video up on their server so that you can then reference it in your video INIT path. So you drop your file path here and then you move along to control net. So you want to enable uh, CN model one. And it takes it a little bit to load. Okay, so here's where we're gonna select. First off is you, once you enable it, I always also select pixel perfect. And this overwrite input frame is pre-selected, so I just leave that as it is. So the three models that um, I'm familiar with are canny, depth, and open pose, and open pose, and open pose face. Um, so let's just keep it on canny. To my knowledge, some of these preprocessors aren't necessarily functional or might have unexpected results. So um, I just pretty much stick with the ones that have been tested and known to work. Um, so after you select your preprocessor, you can leave these as they are. And the next thing you need to do is that same video image path, video path that you put in the video INIT box, you need to put that here as well. Um, down here where it says control mode. So this, this is fun to play around with. Um, we're gonna leave it, actually let's change this to say my prompt is more important. So this is basically how much weight it's gonna put on what control net wants to do versus what your prompt is telling it to do. All right, so after we've done that, we should be good to go. All right, so I'm going to click generate and we're gonna see what happens. Okay, so our video has finished generating. It took about 15 minutes, so let's see what happens. Oh, yeah. wow, so that got pretty extreme. <laughs> Interesting, wow, that's pretty disturbing. So let's see like what's, you know, what's impacting this video. I'd like to go back, I wanna go back to the seed and change it back to a negative one. So I'm curious, that to see like how how that impacted the results you know and how much it did so we're going to go back to negative one seed and generate this video again so our second video has finished generating and now let's take a look and just as a reminder we changed the seed uh, back to back down to its default uh, negative one so, let's see what it did. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's actually, it's a bit more stable. Although, she is becoming nude. So, interesting. So, this is the first video, just to compare it to the other side. So, this is the first video. And you can see like the background really like immediately falls away. She like duplicates and then it's like a weird, you know, sort of very strange, disturbing <laughs> sequence that happens on this one. So next thing I wanna do is, cause I, I want to upload this to YouTube. I don't want it to, you know, her to like become nude. So I'm gonna put not suitable for work. So basically, um, it will prevent nudity and things like that from happening. Um, the next thing I'd like to try just to see what the difference is, is um, changing the control mode. So in both of these videos, we basically, um, the, uh, the prompt that we entered uh, is the most important thing. So let's apply a balance prompt, a balance control mode. Um, another thing that I wanted to try is to, you can have multiple control net models happening at the same time. So I wanna activate a second control model. And on this one, apply the open pose. Actually, 
let's change that. So on the first one, I'm going to change the canny to open pose. On the first control net model. And on the second one, I'm going to change the second one to, um, sorry, to canny. Where is it? Yeah, so the canny. And let's let control net be more important on this second model. And if you are just turning this on, you should also make sure that you put your video path here in this control net input video image path. Okay, so let's see what effect this is going to have. We're going to generate this video. Okay, so we just finished that last video, and what we did there is we um, applied two two layers of control net. The first layer had Oak and the second layer had Canny. And then we had also previously changed the seed to a negative one. So this is that result. And um, it's very interesting. You can see how it like superimposes this face. And then just to compare it, here was the second video that we did where we just had changed the seed to negative one. And she very quickly starts becoming naked in this one. So we're gonna pause it there. And then this was the very first video that we did where we had the seed set to like 2023, 2023, 2023. And this is one where she becomes like multiple people and she starts dancing, you know, to herself very weird. So you can see with just pretty minor adjustments, you can get very different results. So the last thing I want to experiment with is I want to apply a, um, a different, basically, um, visual style to it. So we're using the, the ink punk, um, checkpoint and there's actually an ink punk, prompts that we can use. So I thought it would be interesting to actually to apply prompts from the actual checkpoint that we're using. And this is the style of ink punk. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to copy the positive prompts. And again, this is on stable-diffusion.art.com. And we're going to go back over to our session and we're going to go into the prompts and copy over everything except for NSFW and nudity. And we're gonna put this new, actually, sorry, it's in the wrong place. That goes in the prompt positive. And you can apply your prompt, actually, you know what, I'm wrong. I'm gonna apply this prompt here. Um, if I had multiple frames going on, then I'd want to apply it in the prompt positive so it could apply to all the frames. But since I just have one, I just need to put it there. And then I'm going to get the negative prompt. So this is a lot uh, more simple of a prompt. And again, the prompt's negative. I'm going to make sure I leave my not simple for work and nudity. And then just paste that in there. So now let's run this one and see how it compares just applying a different visual style. Okay, so we ran the final control net experiment of this session. And to recap, in this one, we just changed the prompt. So we left all the settings uh, from the previous video the same. So this was the previous video. And then uh, this was the most recent video. And it's pretty amazing how different they are. And then obviously going back from this video to our very first video. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this little tutorial. And um, as you can see, Control Net is pretty amazing. So thanks for watching and like and subscribe.